and welcome back. Uh, after playing through the Atlantic Chase uh, Bismarck scenario twice from the German perspective, uh, we learned why the British were so afraid of the Bismarck, because uh, twice uh, it managed to get into British shipping and do a lot of damage. So this time we're going to flip things around and we're going to try the uh, solo scenario from the British perspective. So with that introduction, we will jump right into the game. Okay, so let's see what this scenario looks like from the British perspective. So we start uh, a couple of things. We start uh, with no Germans on the board. Um, the other thing is, is that we start with the uh, British carrier not on the board. It's a reinforcement. So on this first turn with nothing better to do, I'm gonna do a reorganize action and attempt to roll to bring that carrier into the game. So we fail, which means that we time lapse. And, and the reason I did that was because the only other thing I could have done this turn is time lapse anyway. So we might as well roll for that, see if we can get it into the game. But then initiative switches to the Germans as a result. So we roll for the weather and there is uh, no change in the weather. So we're rolling uh, on this row because there's no German task forces on the board. And we have a plus one because no convoy has completed at this point. So we got a four, which is an XA result. So let me just quickly look at what that means. Um, Let's see, it says, if there are already three German task forces in play, apply a C German action table result instead. If two or fewer, select the task force nearest a British task force. Uh, but it doesn't actually say what to do if there are no task forces in play. So I'm going to just decide that uh, in this case, um, in this case, it's going to be an XU result, which is going to we're going to bring a, a an un unidentified task force German German task force into play. Um, otherwise, we would do absolutely nothing. So, uh, on a one, that German task force comes in at Narvik. So that will allow them to avoid a lot of these intel triggers down here. So that is their um, first action. And uh, then next up, we are going to, uh, well, I guess we're going to roll again now that I think about it. We, um, oh, yeah, we just created one. So now we're going to roll again. So on a four, it's again, it's an XU result. Uh, it's select an unidentified task force. So we're going to select an identifi unidentified task force, which is the one we just put into play. And we are going to uh, take actions in order to bring a convoy to, to battle. Now, the, one of the things it says here is that you try to, you avoid intel triggers from ports and air bases, and you try to avoid um, intel triggers from stations. But of course, that's, it's impossible to avoid it and still make it out into the Atlantic Ocean. So we have to go through that one hex there uh, and get it. But that is the uh, shortest way. That is the, well, not the shortest distance to a convoy. It has the fewest intel triggers. And so uh, I'm going to kind of decide rather than say going through these two hexes or these two hexes to get a slightly shorter trajectory, I'm going to go this way partly because it's historical, but also partly because it means I only get one intel trigger uh, instead of uh, two. So we have put down a trajectory as our first action. Now we're going to do a naval search. So this uh, this is, is 11 and we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So tw 22. So first things first though, we have to roll on the interrupt table. So the six, we are going to get a minus one. So we've got naval search on this uh, 16 plus column. And we have a minus one to the roll. So it's a seven. So it's it's an early or late. So we will, the Germans will punch a hole here. 
and then they will um, eliminate those segments. Now, one of the things I learned from comments on the last series of videos is that when there's a trajectory uh, with, or when there's a trajectory that has some segments here on the Arctic Circle line, you can essentially treat that as bad weather. So what we're gonna do then is we are going to actually roll for uh, movement. And instead of removing three, we're gonna remove um, four segments. So it gets us down to that. Now on the next one will be Intel limited. So it'll change a little bit uh, how many we can get off, but. Um, okay, so with that naval search complete, um, there's a British attempt to seize initiative, which fails. So we move that to there. The tally marker is now in the one space. So the Germans are once again um, going to attempt to uh, bring this convoy to battle. So naval search one, two, well, th this should be, uh, this should be eight, right? Yes, this is eight. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're on the 14, uh, going to be on the 14 column. So that's right there. And we're going to roll for interrupt again. Seven. So that's again is a minus one. So now we are rolling on the naval search table is a nine. So that is going to actually uh, get a shadow result. And so we are going to uh, eliminate these three segments. Okay, now in this case, I'm not going to roll for initiative because um, the maximum I can remove is two because of the intel marker. Um, and uh, I don't want to roll a one. There's no point in rolling a one. So I'm going to just eliminate two. Even if I'd rolled better than two, I could only I can only remove two because of intel limits. So we are back to attempting to seize initiative. And the British will actually seize the initiative. Now, every time... The, I should have mentioned on the last turn, every time the Germans uh, seize the initiative or roll for weather, you check how many um, trajectory segments you have in convoys. Uh, and um, you uh, you can lose VPs if you have too few. Uh, that would not have been the case here. So we are going to roll for weather. So the weather does not change. So first things first, we are going to um, do a trajectory action to again get this convoy moving towards Clyde. So we do that. And then I'm going to roll for reinforcement again uh, because I would really like to get this carrier into the field of play. So on a seven, that actually succeeds. So the reinforcement enters play and I keep the initiative. So we're going to move the Victorious into here. And with that, that's going to allow us the opportunity to do a couple of things. Um, so first things first, I'm going to get um, my task force with the Hood and the Prince of Wales moving. So we're going to do a trajectory action with them. So we're going to... I'm going to go right in the middle here. Try and intercept that convoy right there. One, two, three. Actually, I'm sorry. I could do it a little bit. One, two, three. No, it's going to be four no matter what. Yeah, it's going to be four no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we... Oh, God, that's so sloppy. Sorry. OCD. Kick it in. Okay. So we do that. And then I am also going to get... Um, this task force, this one right here, which has a pair of cruisers in it, um, coordinating. So we are going to do a trajectory action with them as well and get them to coordinate so they can have a slightly shorter segment. So I'm not going to do an airstrike just yet because that would be um, that would be pretty significant number of um, segments. I'm going to wait until I get this trajectory down a little bit. So um, we are going to be let's pull some markers out here so that we uh, sort of do this right. So this is the active task force. This is the coordinating task force, and. 
this is the task force that we are performing the naval search on. So the Germans have um, a six, we have four. So that is going to be on the 10 row. So we're going to be right here. There are no modifier. Oh, sorry. There is a modifier to this role. In good weather, we get a plus two um, from our coordinating task force. So this is being rolled with a plus two. Oof. So that's an early or late result. Uh, okay. So we are going to punch that hole and do that. And then we are going to time lapse. So each of these has a medium uh, sh ship in it. So that will allow them in both cases to remove uh, three segments. All right, we'll just stick these kind of off to the side here. I have a feeling we're gonna be using them quite a bit. Now, we actually have a decent opportunity for a uh, for a uh, an airstrike because now this is down to two segments so first things first i'm gonna uh, move that trajectory into there um which is going to do that and actually i think what i'm going to do rather than doing an actual airstrike i'm going to get this count this task force moving from um scapa flow to here so let's see do this do this that's fine so we'll do this um and what we're going to do is we're actually going to just use this uh to provide air support um for for uh air, air support for um the uh the the naval search that's going on here okay so we're going to set uh, this as the launch point on the trajectory. So that's going to get us a, um, we're, we're one, uh, an adjacent hex, so that's going to get us a plus two. Uh, probably should just do it from here. That would get me a plus three. So we'll do it from, from that segment right there. So we have a naval search going on with um, four is the trajectory length. They're actually... Probably I should, this is, this, this convoy is involved. So one, two, three, four, five. So seven is the trajectory length and then a plus three for the naval search. So uh, that puts me on that column, but I do have a plus three and I've deleted all of my German dice. All right. All the dice over. Okay. So plus three to this naval search roll. So that is a 10 which gives us a contact and a station result, which is pretty much what I think we were looking for here. So that goes there. We remove those. This, we get a contact. The Germans have a contact marker. And then we time lapse. So the Hood and the Prince of Wales uh, are going to turn into a station and the um, task force with the victorious is going to remove three segments. So that leaves us uh, looking like that. Okay. So now after that naval search, we have an attempt by the Germans to seize the initiative. It is not successful. I feel like I forgot to have the German seize initiative previously. All right, so now, <clears throat> interesting question is, should I launch an airstrike against this task force uh, or not? Uh, I would be on the trajectory length is two. I do have coordination. That would give me a plus two. Um, So looking at this, I'm somewhat unlikely to get a hit on the uh, the Bismarck. So I think what I'm going to do instead is we are going to uh, do an engage action and we'll use uh, this task force uh, for air support. 
So this task force will give me a plus three on air support. Um, I have uh, a uh, zero trajectory length. So we're on the engage table at zero and I have a plus three. I'm not gonna put the launch marker, but the launch marker is there, but I have a plus three for the, that air support. Oh, so six is a skirmish result, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I'm faster. I think, yeah, the uh, Prince of Wales is medium speed, so that is a complete whiff on my part. Woo, I thought I was going to, I was, oh, you know what? Excuse me we have a contact marker so the task force is medium so we have an extra plus two on this so that is a five so that is a, a three plus five so that's actually an eight so that that's actually a battle sorry my bad uh, i forgot that that contact marker was there so we are going to set up for a battle so first things first i have to determine what's actually in this um in this uh task force so I uh, use the top table if a battleship is not yet in play. Okay, so I'm rolling 1d6 here. And on a three result, I've got a battleship and a uh, cruiser. So we're picking a battleship and we're gonna just go ahead and pick the Bismarck because. And for a cruiser, we're gonna pick the Prince Eugen because. So uh, we have a battle going on. So round three is the last round. And the Germans, uh, you know, have not been surprised. So they're going to, uh, they're going to make smoke. And the British have the Hood and the Prince of Wales involved. So they're setting up in the far zone. Okay, so let's start with the Bismarck. And the Bismarck is going to target the most, more lethal um opponent which is the prince of wales so we are at extreme range so we're rolling uh, three dice taking the lowest result um and so what that means and and the bismarck has minus one for smoke plus two for gunnery so the bismarck gets plus one uh, to the lowest result here holy cow well that is not a particularly great result for the British, but the Prince of Wales has taken a hit. Uh, okay. That was unfortunate, but hopefully I can keep him from being like fully damaged. So the Prince Eugen is going to target the hood. Um, this is at a minus one for the smoke. Whew. Uh, so that's a seven. So that doesn't hit. So now the Prince of Wales is going to attempt to repay the favor on the Bismarck. And does actually repay the favor on the Bismarck. With a hit on the Bismarck. And the Hood is going to attempt to uh, do better than the Prince Eugen. This is an even roll, but um, a four is not going to, going to do it. Okay, so with that, that's the first battle round done. Uh, and so then uh, the Hood and the Prince of Wales are going to close the distance. The Bismarck is going to continue to make smoke, um, and but the Germans are going to attempt to break away. So um, we have uh, minus one because we have uh, enemy ships in a near or close zone. Uh, we do not get this because an enemy ship is uh, faster and uh, the, the Germans are in the far zone. So basically they, they have a plus one to, the Germans have a plus one to this roll. But they do not manage to break away. So we're gonna get some shots in here uh, at a more normal range. So the Bismarck uh, is now rolling with um, a plus, still a plus one against the Prince of Wales, but only rolling two dice this time and the Bismarck misses. And then the Prince Eugen with a minus one against the hood, misses. So now the Prince of Wales with a minus one against the Bismarck, 
Misses. And the hood against the Prince Eugen. Misses. So a whole lot of nothing going on there. So that was round two. So now we're into, this is the last round of combat. But before we do that, we will once again attempt for the, the Germans will attempt to break away. So that is a, an eight. So they don't succeed. So we're going to basically just repeat that. So the Bismarck on the Prince of Wales, no luck. And the Prince Eugen on the hood, no luck. Prince of Wales on the Bismarck. Come on, baby does not get a hit with an eight that's just doesn't get a hit and then the hood on the prince eugen does not get a hit so no hits there uh no need to uh break away so uh, i'm just going to return everything to where it was all right so a quick start there uh, to that battle with a couple of hits but uh, nothing after that so now with that engage the german we're vying for initiative the germans need to get this back at this point but they do not so the british get to go again uh actually sorry um i should have time lapsed that task force um because at the end of that battle and then the other thing i need to remember is that this task force has a contact marker. Both of these task forces now have contact markers. So let's take a look at what an airstrike would look like here. So we're on the zero column and we, um, we would be getting a plus four for contact and a plus two for coordination. So I think we're gonna launch a, an airstrike and do our best here to damage the Bismarck. So uh, this task force is launching an airstrike. We have plus two for the contact marker. We have plus two for coordination. So we've got a plus four on this roll on the airstrike table. So that's a 14. So that is a contact marker and a hit. I damage. So, uh, it's actually, let's see. No, okay, so it's damaged. So that is a, a phenomenal result there. That flips the Bismarck to its damage side. Uh, I'm going to assume that go that uh, marker goes away at this point. So the Bismarck is now slow and uh, definitely in trouble. So, let's see. So then, uh, so now we, uh, Airstrike is vying for initiative again. There's no need to... Do any time lapsing? So we're vying for initiative again. And this time the Germans get the initiative back. So now they have a one in play, but they still have a plus one. So they get a four, which is an XA result. Okay, so if the selected task force has a damaged ship, cancel the action and apply a C German action table instead using that task force so a c action um, is going to uh, head towards the to complete in a port so it's damaged so it's going to attempt to get to the nearest port so let's just see what that is so one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so uh, it's equidistant, um, but I'm going to go this direction. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to choose to do that for the Germans mostly because, um, that'll get them up here to the Arctic line so they can act as if there's uh, bad weather. So it'll negate, definitely negate that, um, result from. The, or the 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 uh, victorious being in the game so they place a trajectory i need to add one more segment to it excuse me add it right there now they have an intel trigger here so we can't complete we're, we're too big anyway so we're gonna roll uh for bad weather we're gonna essentially roll oh uh, shoot. Uh, actually, let me... I should roll for the Germans anyway. The weather anyway. Okay, the weather didn't change. I forgot to do that. So we're going to roll and they get a six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
remove up to there. Again, you know, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, they, they can't remove that uh, because of Intel limits. Um, so we're just going to remove that many segments uh, and we'll, we'll leave that one on the board because we can't, uh, we can't remove it while we're removing six. So uh, that is that automatically passes uh, over back to the, the British. The weather does not change. So now, okay, so here's what we're going to do is um, we're going to convert this. We're going to do a trajectory action here. We're going to have that task force go there. And then we're going to do a signals action because of this Intel marker. So we're going to, this is why the Germans needed a little bit. This is going to be really hard for them to get back here with uh, all of this. So they are going to, we're going to do a signals action to um, convert that into a station. And then I believe we time lapse one active task force in the target hex. So this will time lapse. It removes the contact marker from him. Uh, and then after a signals action, we do a seize initiative attempt by the Germans. They miss, unfortunately for them. So now we will be doing a, um, uh, an, an engage action. So uh, this is our active task force. This is our coordinating task force. Uh, and this is our target task force. So naval engage action. We have one trajectory segment total. We are coordinating, but it is in bad weather because it is up there on the Arctic line. So we only get a plus one to this. Um, because it's up there on the Arctic line. So we are on this column with a plus one. So an eight. So we get a skirmish. Now, I believe, yes. So skirmish is going to allow us to have one round of battle um, because the, the Bismarck, the damage Bismarck is actually a slow ship, which makes it slower than um, my two... Uh, that makes it slower than my two ships. So the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen go here. They will make smoke. Um, the Prince of Wales. It's not going to be a very high probability of getting something and a result, but we will give it a shot nonetheless. So the Bismarck is going to fire at the uh, Prince of Wales. He has uh, no modifier to this. <gasps> He... The Prince of Wales is now damaged. That's definitely going to cost me some VPs. Uh, okay. And then the Prince Eugen is going to uh, go after the hood. This is a minus one. So he does not get a hit with a five. So then the Prince of Wales, uh, technically he's on this side right now. So he's got a plus one against the Bismarck. but he is not going to get a hit. And then the hood with an even roll against the Prince Eugen, also not going to get a hit. So that turned out not so great for me, but that is the end of that battle round. All right, so, oof. That was not the best result there. Um, we time lapse, so this becomes a station. And then real quickly, I got to grab contact markers again, because coming out of a battle, um, both of these uh, sort of task forces or both of these stations um, have contact markers associated with them. So having uh, engaged, we vie for initiative, plus one for the Germans on this roll, but the British maintain the initiative. Well, I think I'm going to give it one more sh I mean I could bring this task force to bear because they have a, a an undamaged battleship as well as just a bunch of other ships I think that's what I've got to do we're gonna bring this 
force to bear and we're not going to be we have no ability to do a um airstrike because we're up here on the arctic line so now he will be doing a a uh, an engage action uh trajectory length is four we've got a uh, plus let's see i think it's plus three because the Bismarck is now slow and plus one. So we've got a plus four coordination in bad weather. Bismarck is slow with a contact marker. So we're on this column with a plus four. Aye. Seven is just a flat out miss. So we time lapse. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove three rather than rolling for it. Um, I think that'll be okay. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, you know what? I I forgot uh, to put an intel marker here. So let me put that down. That that should have an intel marker. I, I could have rolled on the... Um, uh, I could have rolled on the interrupt table and... Um, well, let me let me actually do that because just on the off chance that I roll really high, the Germans could have just seized initiative. Um, but they didn't roll high enough. That would have been a, that would have been a minus two, so that would have been uh, an even worse miss for the British on that in that case. So, but now we are the the Germans are vying for initiative. They have a plus two to this roll, so they are going to seize the initiative back. So we will move that back. Uh, I am going to roll for weather. So the weather does not change. Um, but with that, I'm going to actually pause the video here and we will pick it up next turn with the German action after the weather roll. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the, uh, the Atlantic Chase series. Hope you're enjoying the channel. Uh, please... Leave comments if you are with uh, suggestions, especially suggestions for games that you love to see come to the channel or improvements that we could make to the channel. And we will see you in the next video on Agility Snips Gaming Table.